Yu-Gi-Oh is the most confusing thing ever. This is the one I'll get. I'm never gonna get the the gold one. So it's like this is my one. It, it goes fast, man. It, once you no, hit that. No, not with Yu-Gi-Oh. You you hit a ceiling. Break it. Break the mold. You mold, hit a ceiling. Man. Welcome back, guys, to the Pokey Radar Podcast. This is episode nine. Welcome to the three-month period. Um, today, we have our very first non-Pokemon guest. Um, also, the first time you've been on the podcast. You weren't on the earlier one that I used to do. But uh, we have uh, the probably the fastest growing currently Yu-Gi-Oh card content creator, um, Philip Ruxin34. Philip, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. I don't know about fastest growing. I mean, that that's, I'm not sure about that, but well, maybe I, in the last year, right? Uh, I I don't know. Maybe I, I feel like I feel like Sam has probably beaten me out, Team Samurai. But uh, Team you Samurai. Know, well, he's we've been had a good we've a had a good few years recently. Yeah, yeah. he's been big for a while. You you shot yeah, up but he's from almost at two hundred. He'll be the first one if he gets oh, to a million. So, really? He's at like seven hundred fifty or something. So he's he's doing good. That's that's big for. Uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh content world. I know yeah, nothing about Yu-Gi-Oh. I own one Yu-Gi-Oh card. Well, I will say, hey, Mer, why do you even own that? That's a random Pharaonic Guardian super. I opened up. A, it's a super. Oh, um, that's normal. <laughs> super is regular. I opened this from a pack and it graded to 10. So, OK, well, that, that's Yu-Gi-Oh a good reason. But also those that's pretty hard to grade. So that's actually not a terrible card, I guess. Sweet. I couldn't find any pricing on it, so I have no idea what it's worth. But <laughs> I also not have that much, but I have my Duelist League staff shirt. OK. Whatever You've already got more merch is. than I do. You're looking good. <laughs> I think it's 2005. No, okay. it might not yeah. be that old. Uh, I mean, that's but... pretty old. I mean, for Yu-Gi-Oh, we only go back to 2002. So. Okay. Maybe yeah. it's not 2005 then. It might be newer. I have no idea. I'm sure there's a year somewhere. Somewhere but... between 2005, 2010, I think. Okay. Something like that. They had a yeah. few years of that. That would make sense. Um, so, yeah, I, I bought my old card shop. He has a ton of awesome Yu-Gi-Oh. He recently passed away, but has always had a ton of Yu-Gi-Oh. And I would just buy packs every now and then of like First Ed, Pharaoh Servant, Magic Ruler or Spell Ruler. What's Magic the better Ruler, one? Yeah. The orig- First Ed would be Magic Ruler. Magic Ruler. change it to Spell Ruler though. That's right. And then he had all the stuff, LLB, like all the big sets, Metal Raiders. Um, he had some crazy like theme deck case sealed stuff. Um, I didn't really know you at the time, so I didn't hit you up about it. Yeah. But that is sitting possibly I think that's sitting in like the estate of the guy, his family. So I don't know yeah. what will happen with it. But if it ends up in my hands, I will be asking you, you know, you know where I am, what it is. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I'll help you out. I'll help you out. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, back to, to who you are. Rex 34. Maybe you can explain to the world what you do exactly. I We've been friends for. Uh, what a couple of years now, or at least ch- chatting a couple of years now. Yeah, I think we got introduced through Cool Trainer Ryan. Um, yeah, that's, that wh- that's right. why I call you Philip because he calls you Philip. Yeah, he does. He does. I think <laughs> everyone else calls you Phil. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so you could thank Ryan for that. But yeah. Uh, yeah, what's a little a little uh, quick blurb on on who Ruxin Thirty Four is? Um, I I basically just. I open packs on YouTube for Yu-Gi-Oh, um, collect stuff, sell stuff, do all the, you know, the stuff. It's a lot more. I'm a lot more similar to a Pokemon creator than I am mm-hmm. to like the Yu-Gi-Oh people because most of the Yu-Gi-Oh people are doing some sort of like uh, dueling content stuff. So if you think of like Pokerev or something like that, I do very similar stuff to them. Uh, gotcha. Just opening stuff up, selling stuff. Uh, you know, we do some mystery packs, of course, that we all got from Pokerev. So, uh, but by the way, he told me I could do it. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I said, hey, yeah. Uh, we're going to do the exact same thing as you, but for Yu-Gi-Oh! He's like, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think um, you're not even the first to really copy him. So, Oh, no, I wasn't at all. No, but uh, uh, I don't. I think in Yu-Gi-Oh! maybe. But... In Yu-Gi-Oh! for sure. Uh, so whatever works, don't, you know, go for yeah, it. Yeah, and, and I then... was like, look, hey, it's a different card game, you know? <laughs> I don't think he's hopping over here. He's, he's buying, like, too many Pokemon packs at this point. Not yet. I know he's got a crazy Yu-Gi-Oh! collection, so you got to be careful. He does, he might, and I'm trying to get those packs in. from him, but I don't think it's going to happen. No, no. Uh, he... Uh, he was Yugi Rev for like one or two videos back in the day, but that that died out pretty quick. So he did two recently with the 25th anniversary, and I was like, "How oh. they do it?" He's like, "Awful, man, terrible." <laughs> and then he put out another one. I was like, "Okay, all right." Yeah, I don't know how. Like, 
again, I don't know Yu-Gi-Oh at all. I skipped it completely as a kid. I went from Pokemon to Magic with like yeah. Dragon Ball Z in the middle, like the mm-hmm. score. It's yeah, really blurry, but the score of Dragon Ball Z and like other random games, the Harry Potter and stuff. Oh, I have so one I back completely... there. Harry Potter. Where is it? I think it's right. Is that the base set one? It's somewhere over there. It's yeah, all very I, blurry, but I think I see it. I think it's Quidditch. The Quidditch so, Cup. Okay. Yeah, it's not a yeah. very big one, but whatever Wizards of the Coast games came out, I was buying and playing. So I completely skipped Yu Gi Oh. I never watched the anime. People say it's incredible. Yeah. So yeah. maybe I'll pick it up. Like even as adults, people say. Like going back to Yu Gi Oh is pretty awesome to watch. Um, I assume you feel the same way. <laughs> yeah, I went back and watched the anime because I I didn't get to watch every episode back in the day because uh, you know you couldn't like record stuff back then unless you had like VHS tapes and all that stuff. And right. I didn't even really know when it came on, so I saw a few episodes. So I went back like in 2018 or 19 or whatever and watched it, and I was like, I love the show. Like <laughs> it it it's really stupid at the time, but. It's like, you know that, so you just enjoy it the whole time. It's just really funny. So there's some terrible parts, but a lot of it is really awesome. And that was on what, like Kids WB or something? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's the the four kids redubbed it and like took a bunch, like a few things out. Like like the time where Kaiba chucks a, a, like, I think it was like a, yeah, it wasn't a blue eyes, but he chucked one of his cards and it like stuck in this dude's hand. And then another time they were trying to shoot him with a gun in the Japanese anime and he puts a card like, in like i don't know how guns work but the thing like that kind of goes like that and and so he stuck it in there so he couldn't (laughs) shoot the gun it was insane it was awesome and like Uh they took that out for us so we didn't get to see that okay so i got i have to watch the japanese dub version then well i mean i watch dub anyway because i don't watch like sub because it's too much work to have to read the the subtitles but yeah (laughs) i'm too distracted now i'm uh, yeah i'm (laughs) I'm doing other stuff all the time so (laughs) Yeah, I'm not watching the TikToks that have the games that are being played on half yeah, the Yeah, I'm not watching yeah, the TikTok and then listening <laughs> to somebody talk about something completely different. Yeah, yeah, I don't get that, but it's working on me. And I'm becoming very distracted consistently throughout my life. So whatever, whoever figured that whole thing out with TikTok, I hate you because <laughs> yeah. I have a terrible attention span now. Um, yeah, they purely really from everything. That. <laughs> so, so Yu-Gi-Oh! content, again, your opening packs, which kind of seems like the the go-to thing the bread and butter of tcgs it's what works with pokemon it's always worked with pokemon why weren't people doing that in Yu-Gi-Oh? you said they do dueling content what is that well so uh Yu-Gi-Oh is really big around like the actual card game so unlike pokemon like like half you know it's probably like 50 percent of the people are playing the game versus uh-huh. like in pokemon it's like what five percent or something probably a yeah. lot a lot lower you know it, i think it's gotten a little bit more popular but compared to Yu-Gi-Oh, it's like everyone plays the game basically and i don't play the game that much like i i know how to play but i really don't play very much so i am like kind of unique in that aspect because like most of the content creators are like hey i'm gonna make this deck with the new ban list that came out and like do all this stuff i'll I'll do some content on old old ways to play like a different 2010 you could play like this and all that stuff like that and i've never really done content like that because it's not like really what i do and there still have been people opening it's just not as popular like in Pokemon, you know, there's like hundreds of people opening packs on YouTube versus right. Yu-Gi-Oh! It's a lot less people doing that in terms of like the bigger creators. Um, there's only There was only a few when I first started doing it, but okay. they've been around for like 10 years. So they were like kind of like there's like two or three guys that have been doing it for so long. Right. There's what? Samurai. Or Team Samurai, kind of Simply Unlucky, Cyber Knight have all been ar- around for a really long time. Yeah. Uh, and so I kind of hopped in and there wasn't like, I mean, there was like three big guys or I, I feel like I'm maybe forgetting somebody, which is going to be awkward, but uh, Happens, there wasn't sorry, like, you know, 50 people or whatever that have yeah. been doing it for a long time. So Yeah, but you started, though, what, three years ago? Uh, really got super serious about like opening content, like 20, late 2019. And then 2020 is when I kind of yeah. had a surge and kind of like, because, probably because of like COVID and stuff. But yeah, and you, I mean, I know you were grinding it for a long time and still doing your nine to five. That was... Oh, that's got to be over a year now ago where you quit your you yeah that count. was uh Octo- i officially quit october 1st 2021 so it's been okay a year and a half yeah over oh, a year and a half yeah that's awesome and you were you were an accountant right that's uh yes yes yeah yeah uh, i'm very familiar with that life my dad dad is yeah. an accountant my brother's an accountant i tried to be an accountant but then gave up Me on too. it oh that's the exact same <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh and ended up yeah, I went from I went from accounting because it was too difficult to finance, yeah. and then from finance because it was too boring to marketing. Yeah. 
And yeah. that was just way too easy. And I learned nothing. I just had fun doing group projects in college yeah. and ended up now doing Pokemon full time. So <laughs> here we are. It worked um, out. It worked out. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but yeah, so you, you found this little niche of like, hey, you, there's no Yu-Gi-Oh creators doing this really. Uh, let's see if it works. What was like, what was the reason you came to YouTube? Did you have, were you a big YouTube fan or did you watch Pokemon content or you watch, what were you watching that like enticed you to want to do YouTube? I don't remember exactly. I just remember in my last year of school, I was in my master's program. Uh, I was trying to get 150 hours for the CPA, which I never took, by the way, just throwing that out there. But I did a master's just so I'd have 150 because that's the minimum requirement. So I had to do that. Okay. Uh, so it was all online, though, but I was still living in like the same city as like the college or whatever. So mm -hmm. I had I was working part time. I was doing that part time, but then I still had a lot of extra time kind of on the side. So I started watching a lot more YouTube. The only thing I'd really watched before that was like Clash of Clans content back when I played that a lot. Uh, so it wasn't that much there. But then like once I, in 2018, I somehow, going from Duel Links, I guess, because I downloaded Duel Links. That was uh, a, a Yu-Gi-Oh game that came out on the phone. I started yeah. watching some stuff there and that kind of bridged me over to like card content, like physical card content. Because yeah. before I was spending money on a, a mobile game which you know it's never usually a good idea so it's right. like maybe i should buy like physical cards i'd be like i'd actually have something you know to yeah. show for it so i started doing that and i found pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh content i was actually really into both at the time 2018 and 2019 okay. i wasn't even like all Yu Gi Oh. It was probably like 50 50 i watched a ton of like uh tca gaming i watched uh who else was around back then i mean um, leonhart that was his leonhart time. was around of course uh i feel like there's somebody else oh Zach Jim at Pokemon, Jim at of course. Pokemon. Yeah. So uh, he influenced me in a, a lot of great ways because he had some really great content, which I know he influenced you as well. So, yeah. uh, and he's awesome. So I watched a, lot, a ton of his content because it went back to 2014. So there was yeah. years to watch at that point. And I learned a lot about the Watsi sets and everything from that. And so I was super into that stuff. And then I was like, I really, I, I was making Duel Links content at first and it wasn't like doing anything at a hundred something subs or whatever. Okay. And I was like, if I'm going to buy these, I might as well record it or whatever. Cause it looks like these people that I'm watching, you know, they're not doing anything fancy. They're just opening it up and talking yeah. about it. And I, at the, by the time I started doing it, I had a ton of knowledge just from watching other people on YouTube. Uh, so I felt like I knew what I was talking about for the most part. Yeah. So I just kind of started doing it that way. And it turned into just be, being really consistent, just doing it a ton. Yeah. Zach, Zach was just here. Uh, he had to film, film his podcast. Um, well, this, this will come out in like three weeks or two weeks from now, but yeah, <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah he, he was just here hanging out in Dallas. Um, but yeah, it's, it's cool. He was like the first guy that I found and now he's really good friends with him. So it's pretty awesome. Um, it's funny that, that you, you found him as well back when you started. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, I guess during that era, that 20, really like 2015 through 2018, just like discovered Pokemon or Pokemon content right. through him, through TCA, through, yeah, really, th those are the two guys that I remember. For um, primetime Pokemon, if you're familiar. Yeah, with yeah. If you wanted to see any box open, he's got it. Yeah, like yeah. base set, you know, all of them. He had a box, a full box opening, which was really cool. Yeah, and he would he would do his summer opening series. Uh, it was great. Prime it time. was. Yeah, wasn't it once a week or something? He yeah. would he would put out a, a like a Watsy box. It was mm -hmm. insane. Yeah, he would do half a box each video or something yeah. like that. And by uh, the time I saw him, they were already out. So I just like go one to one, one like right. in a row. Yeah, gosh, I miss. I wish he was at the card party. That would have been great. That would have been that a real been awesome. like big. It would have been a bigger line than Pokey Ref. Yeah, that would have been <laughs> incredible. All us old heads would have loved him. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I think I tagged him or tried to tag him in a story post while we were there. Um, I don't think he's. I have. I've reached out to him once to do the yeah. podcast. No, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Through like YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Like I've tried everywhere and can't get a hold of this guy. He's uh. He's like he's a tough he's, one. Uh, he's the white whale. It's, it's yeah. tough to get him. <laughs> yeah. Once I get primetime Pokemon on the podcast, I can I can die. That'll happy. be the official end of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Like the, like all the podcasts are over. Once you get yeah. everyone has to stop. This is it. This is done. <laughs> Everybody has to watch. No one else can do anything else. Um, but yeah. So that's that's awesome. So you you weren't even like collecting or like doing a side gig type thing of Yu Gi Oh for a while it's just like you were bored in school with free time and started watching youtube started playing the game and then wanted to start playing in person or with the physical cards 
Um, so did you just like jump into it as like start playing and opening or were so, you, did you have a, a plan of any kind? Did you have people you were doing this with? So I started buying the cards, but I didn't ever start playing. So oh, okay. I only like really got back into playing when Master Duel came out like a year and a half ago. So okay. like when I got back in, I was just like going to Walmart and been like, okay, I want these because they like because they had like legacy packs sometimes like the old stuff that I remember. And I was like, I want yeah. this. So I would buy those and probably lose a bunch of money opening them. But I was at least like not just buying, you know, digital cards or whatever. So yeah. I was doing that for a while. And then I started selling on Instagram, I guess, is where I started like selling stuff. I did eBay okay. and Instagram for a little bit. Uh, and Instagram kind of like, it's, I kind of grew like a mini following for like a thousand, 2000 followers. And that probably really helped my YouTube when I first got started. Cause there was at least right. people that knew about me for the last year they'd bought from me and everything. So I was able to like get people to watch from there. And that probably helped a lot, like growing my initial like thousand, fifteen hundred subs and stuff like that before yeah. like 2020 came around and I actually like grew a lot. Yeah. I mean, that was a lot of followers then, especially for a Yu-Gi-Oh guy too. like having a couple thousand yeah. on Instagram was a good number. Um, so did you, yeah, I still see you selling some stuff on Instagram here and there. Um, are you full like again you you jump full time to doing this Yu-Gi-Oh content a year and a half ago are you is that your main gig like just doing content or are you making more money selling stuff like what's the fight like what's what's your <clears throat> your main source of income i guess is it the content so uh content makes me mo like some money obviously but mm -hmm. uh without like selling stuff i wouldn't be able to maintain it cuz i use a, i lose money a lot of time on my videos right. because like I, I will open like, you know, expensive stuff, like a couple yeah. of that. Sometimes I'll open a thousand dollar box or whatever, like a few hundred dollars. And like the revenues, you're not really going to get that back unless you have like a huge video, which you usually don't like most of the time. Right. So I do a lot of, uh, a lot of selling on the side for Instagram, whatever I'm selling through. Uh, I don't, I've never really used a ton of eBay. I think I only have like 300 feedback, but early on I used it a little bit. Um, most I use TCG a lot. I have almost like 9,000 sales oh. on there because you don't have to put pictures and you don't have to do anything. You just click <laughs> the thing that the price or like the condition and then put a quantity and that's it. That's so nice. it's really fast and it saves me a ton of time with that. Uh, I usually I'm pretty strict on my conditions though, because if yeah. you don't have pictures and they can't look at them, it's more likely to get a return. So I try to bump it down like one. So if it's like, if it's borderline, I, like near men, I'll put it lightly played. So that way yeah. nobody returns it. They're happy with it. And, uh, yeah, still returns and everything, but, uh, that is where I move a lot of my newer stuff too, because I open a ton of product for the new sets. And then I usually sell everything except for maybe like one card, um, to help like pay for that and stuff like that. Cause I, I go for gotcha. like the big one and then I keep that one and everything else I sell. So, okay. uh, I do a lot of that and then sponsors and everything on the channel help like for actually making some money on a, a few videos. Right. Right. Yeah. You've done, you've done whatnot recently. I think that's been yeah. long ish for a while yeah um what else who else have you been sponsored by well whatnot is like our my main like tcg sponsor when it right. comes to like actually related to my content i do other stuff like uh you know factor hello fresh stuff like that like food oh do you really related stuff yeah so th those are wow. nice i've done those for probably like a year now at this point like once a month ish uh cool. ray shadow legends the the classic the legendary <laughs> mobile game uh no way. i great. didn't know that yeah, I, well, I do streams for them, so I'll play like for an hour at the end of my stream oh. and stuff like that. So that's about once a month. Okay. So I don't want to do it like any of this too much, you know, because right. if, if it encroaches on the content or anything. But I usually right. do about one a, a month because those are supportive of the channel. Like, yeah. and uh, there's some well, other do... ones like Raycon and stuff like that. Wow, all the cla all the all the classics. Yeah, you do have right. like what two hundred? How many subs do you have? Two hundred some thousand now? Yeah, we're a little over two hundred now. I think like two hundred four at the time of recording this, something like that. Okay. That's awesome. I actually haven't even like, I mean, I guess I don't consume that much content anymore, but I feel like I've never seen a Pokemon guy get an off brand sponsor like that. Like hello fresh. Really? Yeah. Nobody do, does those. No. I feel like a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh people do hello fresh and, uh, and, I, uh, factor. Wow. I would love that. I used to use hello fresh. Do you get free food from them? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you that. I don't, oh, I don't really okay. know sorry. if these contracts sorry, sorry, work, sorry. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, don't, it's don't a answer, sponsor, don't so I, I yeah. don't know. I'm sure I could, um, but just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's really interesting. I, cause 
I mean, obviously, like if I can start getting sponsors for the um, for the podcast, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I saw would. people were buying that because you. Yeah, I, I they actually DM'd me. I uh, yeah. they they gave me just the generic like, "Hey, fill out this super fan ambassador form." <laughs> um, I did anyway just to see what would happen. But yeah, uh, yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know that was happening in the card space. I wonder. I wonder what. Well, I know a lot of like. a lot of Poco tubers, if you call them that. Uh, I feel like, well, Rev, especially, I know a lot of them just don't take a lot of sponsorships. Yeah. So. Well, Nick's like crazy. <laughs> yeah. He I mean, is very, he's very against working with it, which I, I, I get it. If you're, yeah. he doesn't even need it. So, right. But like, right. I feel like when he's ready I mean, to sell out, cash out a little bit, I don't think he's for, ever going to do that. I think, I think his kids fine. college <laughs> tuition's paid for or something. He'll do it. But yeah. 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 He's got a while. Yeah. He's, he's doing just fine. He doesn't need the sponsorships. Right. Um, but yeah, it is odd to see. I think it's just because Pokemon, all these Pokemon people doing content have built up such incredible, like <laughs> incredibly expensive collections yeah. that they, they just don't need the money. So, right. Um, it, I mean, outside of Nick, who's just like a very savvy business guy. Uh, with his yeah. I mean, those Poker Rev packs are, those are pretty impressive. People they like those are. things. I and bought he, a few of them myself. They're very fun. You know, I haven't bought any yet. I need to do that. Dude, Sorry. come on. Sorry, Where's Nick. support? <laughs> Where's the support? Sorry, Nick. Uh, yeah. I, I, not that it matters. They sell in <laughs> three minutes or whatever. That's the, that's the thing. Like, I, I won't hear about it, and then I'll look them up, and they'll be sold out. He goes yeah. through a lot, which is really impressive. I saw um, the operation. I'm sure you've seen the operation because you've yeah. lived around it for a while. But I saw the operation. Yeah. I was like, this is insane. <laughs> yeah. And we talked about – I had him on – for my first episode of bringing back the podcast. And he said he went through, I don't know, ten, it was tens of thousands of packs a month just yeah. for those things, which is unbelievable. I mean, I don't think anyone else can do that. No. Um, so <laughs> no it's, cash flow on the, I don't got the cash flow for that. That's insane. <laughs> well, you're, you're doing the, you're doing the Yu-Gi-Oh ones. How's yeah, that? but I, I'm not actually doing them personally. I'm working oh. with a friend that is also a friend of, of Poker Rev, but okay. uh, he's actually like doing all like the everything. I'm doing the promoting for him. Right. And, like I, I also have input on what's going to be in there too. So I yeah. like, you know, I'm a big part of it, but I'm not like physically putting them in there. And like, well, neither is Nick. I hope you're not doing that. You should. Yeah, be. but like, <laughs> should be. Yeah, but like, it's in a different state versus him. It's like, right. you know, it's right there. It's just, yeah. he's not physically doing it. How many, how many packs do you move through? When you list We've those. only done a couple of rounds. The first time we did, we did 500 because we wanted to make sure we sold out. They sold out really fast. Wow. So we did 15 the next time. They sold out a little bit slower, but the first day was like a thousand. Wow. Uh, so they did pretty that, well. Yeah. Uh, and then we have a few more of the second round that we're going to do uh, that we, we like didn't want to max out on them, but we still have some more like set aside that we're going to do uh, okay. probably later this year. And then maybe we'll do a, a 3.0 at some point. Awesome. That's fantastic. That's more than I expected, honestly. I mean, not to, yeah, just, they, just... they did really well. And, you know, most almost everybody loves them. There's, there's yeah. always a few people that are like mystery pack. You're going to lose your money, you know? Yeah. So, well, that's yeah, that's how it goes, guys. Like, that's how it goes. Yeah. yeah. I, but I always do a video on them like and I'm like, hey, don't buy them unless you expect <laughs> to potentially lose money. But we're going right. to try to make these things as good as possible so that more people will make their money back or get awesome packs and and if you open them, it's it's up to you. If you open the packs, I can't do anything. You know, you might pull nothing. <laughs> I mean, th those are mysteries as well. So you just yeah, it's... those are those are where you really lose it. You know, you start opening packs. That's the problem. Are you able to source vintage pretty well, uh, Yu Gi Oh? Is that what you, yeah. I, I'm assuming? That's what you put in the mystery packs for the, for the hits. What we kinda... do it. We do it almost exactly like Reb does. We have like yeah. the levels, and then like the highest level has like a 2002 pack in it or okay. something really cool like that. But you can't really do it with years as well with Yu Gi Oh because there's like some years in like 2008 that packs that are extremely rare, yeah. and then like some in 2004 that suck. You know, so you kind of <laughs> just have to like pick the good ones and put them in there. But okay, yeah, we we usually have a decent amount or a good enough amount, but it can be hard to find different yeah. booster boxes and stuff yeah i mean i'm not really looking for Yu-Gi-Oh ever but i do feel like there's been a good amount of those early sets pretty consistently through heritage through golden yeah through wherever the blue eyes metal raiders pharaoh servant magic ruler and light what's the fifth one Lord with the nightmare not that one but um there's Invasion a lot of, of chaos legacy of Inva darkness legacy what's the lightness lightness of no um uh Gosh. you're talking about light of destruction maybe lod that's a, is that that's, L lod is legacy of darkness legacy of darkness okay then yeah. it is a legacy that's of the darkness. sixth set but yeah okay okay yeah um 
Yeah, I know nothing about Yu-Gi-Oh, so sorry. I mean, you, you knew some <laughs> of the names, so that's pretty good. Some, some of the names. Um, I know that uh, there's also some pretty high-end like trophy cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, too. Um, yeah. I had a friend here in Dallas who he was buying them. He was buying like really, really high-end stuff like that were you know, the high tens of thousands, like 60, 70, 80,000 for cards. Do you know or deal at all in the high end Yu-Gi-Oh stuff like that? I would love to get those Shonen Jump prize cards and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. But they are so expensive. I have one. I have the last one and it's the cheapest one. I got it for, it's a nine five and I got it for 2,500, which I felt like is a steal yeah. for like what it is. Cause like they're the weird thing about those is you don't know exactly how many there are. Cause they did like a re-release on some of them. Oh, okay. So it's still like hundred something, you know, only a hundred something of them, mm-hmm. just still low, but it's not like five or whatever. Right. Um, so when I got, I was able to get that, it was like a quad nine, five from BGS that someone was selling. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I'll buy that. The others like before that are a lot more expensive, like Cyberstein and stuff like that. And then shrink and, there's also like some even more rare ones, like the world prize card. There actually is like two of those. Those are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've seen some of those. Those yeah. were the ones that I think that were being dealt in. But um, you mentioned Beckett. Is Beckett the go to for Yu Gi Oh? I know Beckett no, is no, kind no, of definitely like. Definitely not. No. The go to for Magic, or at least always has it, been. It's not. It's PSA for sure. But yeah. that the one that I had a chance to buy, the guy just graded with Beckett and okay. I didn't care about what it was graded by. And since it was a quad, I was like, that's probably pretty solid anyway. So yeah. I went, went ahead and went for it. Okay. Yeah. They, um, the prize cards are, are interesting. Is there, what's the circuit like for Yu-Gi-Oh? Do you know for, for playing? Is it, you said like there's a worlds every year. Is it usually, is it all in the U S is there a heavy, like international scene for Yu-Gi-Oh? So there is, um, there's YCSs which come out monthly or so, uh, not every month, but a lot of months. And then there is also a national once a year. And then there's worlds as well, which is also once a year. Okay. So the YCSs can go, there's some in Europe, there's some in North America, you know, Mexico, Canada, US, you know, they're, they're basically everywhere. And then the worlds is usually, I, I feel like it's in Japan this year. Oh. I don't really know because I've never actually been to one. Because they they was canceled for so long, they didn't right. have it last year, and they just did national instead okay. uh, in Chicago, and uh, so it's back this year. So I guess I think it's in Japan. I'm not going, but I'm I'm leaving in a couple of weeks. This will be out while I'm in Japan, I think, for Pokemon Worlds. How come you haven't? Well, you, well, you said they were canceled for a while. Do you want to go? Is it like a big thing for content creators in Yu Gi Oh? Or is it just like players only? So I go to a lot of the YCSs. It really is mostly a tournament though. It's not as much of like an event, but I go and I, you know, see other creators and then I'll try to record some videos while I'm there and, you know, do stuff like that. Uh, yeah. But it's mostly like the tournament national. I had to miss because my brother was getting married. Um, it was just a couple of weeks ago and they had like a couple different tournaments. There was tons of people there that were like not just players. So I kind of missed out, unfortunately on that. I was there last year, but uh, you know, he couldn't miss it for my brother's wedding or whatever. So, uh, Unbelievable. yeah, I know pretty, pretty, dis- <laughs> pretty disrespectful by me not being there. <laughs> um, okay. So has the Yu-Gi-Oh like world grown with content creators? Like you said, there was really only three big names, maybe four or five big names when you started. Is it, do you feel like it's starting to get saturated at all or cause Pokemon is impossible. I mean, even if you want to come in and do pack openings, it's so hard to get views, get to build a name now because there's so many people doing it. Uh, is that happening in Yu-Gi-Oh yet or is Yu-Gi-Oh pretty, pretty stagnant? Like I, again, I don't follow the market. I know like I'll, I'll look at the old stuff and it skyrocketed back when everything else skyrocketed. It's come down when everything else has come down. Um, but what's the what's the health of the Yu-Gi-Oh community Yu-Gi-Oh market right now? Obviously 25th anniversary just came out, so there's been a lot of hype and excitement around that. Um what's the the general health of Yu-Gi-Oh looking like right now? Well, uh when I joined there was like four like a few people opening packs, but there's always been big creators that do the other stuff that I mentioned earlier. So there's a lot of people doing that and then uh you know, there's some other people coming up opening packs and stuff like that. So it it's like you know, it's, it's kind of like everything is it's, you know, it's 
not like 2020, 2021, where everything was crazy, but uh, the prices have cooled down a little bit, which is actually great for me. Uh, I don't have to spend as much. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people are like concerned, like, oh, my price is going down. I'm like, well, I mean, it's good for me. I mean, if, if you're not like trying to sell right now, it's not a big deal. Cause like, if you're just right. holding on to it. You know, who cares? You can get more stuff in your collection. But if you're trying to sell right now, it's not great because your, your stuff's down about 50% or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then the content is same thing. It's like, well, it's summer right now, but it, it was pretty solid last year, like, and through most of this year, but summer, it's been a little, little slow, but 25th yeah. anniversary was pretty big. So That's good. that kind of helped out and turn us around. But I know what you mean with like Pokemon, like trying to break into Pokemon is really difficult because there's so many people. Cause yeah. my second channel is a Pokemon channel. Actually, it's not, you have a related. second channel. I have a, I actually have three channels. Look at the uh, research I'm doing. I, I'm one that I uh, abandoned, but uh, oh, no, so it doesn't matter. It. Yeah, because it was like all like stream highlights and stuff, and I just didn't do it. But my Rux my Pokemon, Pokemon channel is has to do with like Pokemon Nuzlocks and stuff like that. So I do that, uh, and it is so hard. Like it is so hard to get like any like I, traction on that. I I do see you doing Nuzlocks. What's the name of yeah. the Pokemon one? Pokerux. So Pokerux. You like that name? That's great. So many different names. Pokerux. There you are. Yeah. So Everyone go follow Pokerux. I literally just oh. finished a run right before this. So <laughs> are you I, live streaming this or are you? Uh, so I normally have been doing Twitch, Twitch for everything and then oh, having them edited. Twitch. Okay. But I, I did my first run like off Twitch so that I could like do voiceover and everything and mm. like do that. So and this was the one. The first one was. So hopefully it's out by the time this podcast comes out. But interesting. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. So I just I enjoy doing those right now. We're making like 30 bucks a month on ad revenue. Nice. So not doing great, <laughs> but uh, you know, we're doing what we can. Nice. I just broke the, the hundred dollar mark for my ad revenue. So here we are. That's Crushing nice. That's it. a good, that's a good milestone. That's Crushing 1200 it. a year. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Um, you, you mentioned, uh, well, I guess, I don't know if you've ever talked about this, but, um, Obviously, during the big boom of Pokemon, there were a lot of big time content creators that came into the world to open packs and jump on the hype and all that. The one big time Yu-Gi-Oh guy who does seem to genuinely enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh, probably on an unhealthy level, is uh, is Penguins or um, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, what's what's his other Charlie. name? Charlie. Um, yeah, he. Uh, <laughs> He spent so much money on Yu-Gi-Oh by the looks of it uh, and went crazy. And you've had the opportunity to, to, to deal with him a little bit, right? And spend yeah. some time with him. Yeah, we've done a few videos. Um, he actually, he got so into it that he bought every card that was ultra and above so that he would not have to open any more packs. He literally <laughs> became has, an addiction. He has all of them. Literally. He has them all. Just so raw. Yeah, he he doesn't care about grading or anything. He doesn't. Okay. He, he says grading is a scam. So you know whatever you think about that, but yeah. he believes that. So he just bought them all raw. So like he has every card. And the, one of the first times he he posted a video about that, and I like reacted to it one time. Yeah. And uh, and just like looked at everything, and it got like a ton of views, and I was like, that's cool. And then he like had followed me on Twitter, I guess. So. One time I sent him a message about doing an opening. So we did an opening one time and that was, I got to go down and like meet him and everything. So that was cool. And then we did a, he was on my guess that price series where I have people guess Yu-Gi-Oh card prices. So I've done two videos with him at this point and cool. uh, he is a Yu-Gi-Oh addict and he's actually knows a lot. Like when he did the guess that price thing, he did really well, actually. That's awesome. I, I, I watch his stuff every now and then. Um, what's his other, what, what's the other name he goes by on Twitch? Penguins, um, Moist Critical. Moist Critical. That, yeah, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. He's got like uh, 50 names. Yeah, he, which is crazy because you think everybody, all these big time people to make it in content, you have to have the same name across every platform. Well, he's been he's, around for like 15 years. So yeah, he's, he's been had doing it for five so different names. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was, I mean, I, he's got to have like an awesome warehouse or like kind of content area is that I, I assume he doesn't do all this like out of his house but um does he have like a compound i know like nick's yeah trying to they build have a like a big thing that they do a lot of their like videos in and stuff yeah. so i just like met him there okay. and but it was impossible to find so if good thing for them privacy is going to be a <laughs> no problem because they told me exactly where to go and i could not find it so i finally did find it but that's awesome I, were you were you a fan of his at all beforehand i 
again, like I've only watched random stuff of his, mainly the Yu-Gi-Oh things he was doing. He did a little bit of Pokemon, but he just goes on rants and just yeah. t- talks about people and events and things. It's it's pretty funny. It's um, pretty incredible because I remember I first heard about him from Poker Rev, who's a huge fan of his. Yeah. Um, and Rev was like, because he was like, this guy's getting like a million views on his opening video. We can't do anything over here. And he's and like, <laughs> Charlie's got like, you know, he, he doesn't care about quality. He doesn't have thumbnails. He doesn't have any of that stuff. He just yeah. opens stuff up, gets a million views. So yeah. uh, I started watching him like after that. And I was like, this guy's insane. And like, he just, he can do anything. He can do any content. It doesn't have to be high quality. It can be high quality. It can be literally be anything. And it'll just do well. It's insane. Yeah. It's yeah. That's, I guess the, the reward of doing it for 15 years and building up a crazy fan base. He's also yeah. just like very monotone. <laughs> he doesn't really like right. go up and down. Like there's not a lot of, not that I'm calling out Charlie, but there's not a lot of entertainment there, <laughs> at least from like a, no, uh, it's entertaining. It's just well, not it's, very, it's, you, you want more, you feel like you want more emotion. And then you start yeah. seeing like any like change of like, any any sound you're like oh okay he's getting emotional here and he's like yeah. slightly like <laughs> more into yeah it. just barely gone up on it yeah it's very it's great. entertaining I love his, it. his takes his takes on things are just hysterical and he does the I dumbest feel like most of the time he does pre- he makes pretty f- good takes like i yeah. mean sometimes he'll say something crazy but like most but, yeah. people when you talk about that many different opinions like you're gonna say something insane he really does so it's yeah. pretty good well yeah it's so uh, you know with him not doing as much Yu-Gi-Oh! I wonder if that's hurt, <laughs> hurt the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Um, possibly, I, yeah, possibly. I know, I know it helped a ton, for sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because Nick had all those people trying to hit him up when he was doing his lives, and he had no idea who they were. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, he told <laughs> me about Twitch that. Streamers. He's like, all these Twitch guys are like streaming my stream, and I don't know who they are. And I was like, aren't those guys like really big? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he had at the t- he had Miskiff, who was like the biggest at the time it was happening. Yeah. Re- streaming his stream which was insane yeah uh, so okay so yeah so you're very well versed with like the whole twitch world youtube world content right. creation you know what's going on are you you do lives right yep is that are you selling stuff when you do lives or are you doing a bunch so, of different things uh with new sets i just open my own like cases and then i resell them and then okay. uh with sometimes i'll do box breaks for my members and we'll do those they're usually short streams, like 30 minutes, 45 minutes. We'll do a box break of an older set. Yeah. Uh, and that I do sell ahead of time. And then obviously like whatnot stuff is live or whatever. Right. Do you have a distributor? I don't know. I work with a guy uh, <laughs> that I, he's like a friend. and He's a Yu-Gi-Oh guy. And so he gets like stuff for me or whatever. That's but good. I don't actually physically have a distributor and stuff. Because, yeah, I, I could do it, but. I don't know. I don't know if I want that that many cards. You know? Yeah, it is. Uh, it can get out of hand pretty quick. Because I know you yeah. like have to be consistent with it, and it's like yeah, if you want to grow the numbers. So it's right. You get a distributor if you want to build a card business. You don't get a distributor if you're just wanting to open cards for content. <laughs> exactly. I don't. <laughs> way. I don't. I, at the at this moment, I'm not trying to just like 100 okay. percent be selling cards all the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it would obviously it would do well next year. Like your your. Uh, your mystery bags and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I already sell a lot, but like if yeah. I wanted to go to the next level, I would have to do that. But right. Maybe I would prefer if, yeah. not to like be packing orders all day. If yeah, I take you don't have yeah. to, no need to, to overdo it. That's for sure. Cause yeah, I, <clears throat> I buy, I probably get like 15 K worth of new Pokemon every new set, yeah. maybe 20. And I don't have time to sell it. So it just sits. Yeah. Um, which is really frustrating because it's a cash flow problem. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but yeah, it just sits. I, I want to sell some of it. I want to recoup some of that money, but I just can't. So probably smart. You don't want to do that at the current time until you're, you build like a team for it or something. Right. Um, yeah. Having, having a bunch of people like working at it and like doing it for you would be great, but I don't at the moment. So yeah. Is that, is that kind of where you want to go though? Like, do you want to make this a really big thing? Are you happy with where you at? Are you trying to make it build, like, do you have, I'm assuming you have at least one editor at this point, or at least I hope. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have two, two editors for the main channel, one for the Pokemon channel, which is yeah. nagging of course, but uh, <laughs> hopefully one day it won't. Um, so I have three, and then uh, my brother's been helping me during the summer, but he's in high school, so he's gonna he's gonna go back after that. So okay, at, at that point, we'll be back to just me. Tell him to, to drop out of high school and no. do this. <laughs> <laughs> like no, not worth it. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, is it, so yeah, do you want to like build out a bigger brand, a bigger team, or are you just like still grinding away at trying to do this YouTube, make it 
a thing? Does it feel like a thing? Like what, what, what's your, your mindset right now with, with all this? Uh, I, I mean, I've been just doing the same thing basically, uh, just trying to do that. But so it's like, I have to decide at some point if I want to try to branch into like having a whole, you know, thing with a bunch of people. The problem with doing that is you got to find, if you're going to have people handling your cards physically and like knowing where you live and all that different stuff, they got to be trusted. And I, and so if that's the hard part, you know, once you finally that get that lot. started, like then you could maybe figure it out. But so I got, I got to figure that out. Um, you know, uh, right now doing the whole Pokemon thing is kind of like a, you know, I guess it's a hope that it could, it could be big and I could have two different channels, which would be great, yeah. but you know, it's it probably won't happen, but it's more, it's also fun, you know, to like take a little break from all the, you know, grinding and stuff to do that. So I, I'm not sure right where right now I'm kind of like, I don't know where I'm going to go. Am I going to just keep doing this or yeah. you know, I'm going to try to do something else or I don't know. So we're going to see what happens at this point. I'll come back and so, look at this in a few years. So you took your hobby as a YouTube, the card opening creator to a full-time job to now creating a hobby of another YouTube channel. <laughs> yes. that That is literally what is happening. Yes. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, you have your, your plaques behind you. Which yeah, one? So That's this 100K. is the real one. Yeah, this was... one, my <laughs> my sister made for me at 40K uh, for Christmas. That's so awesome. It, it's a fake plaque, but it looks real though. It looks great. It looks like a yeah. cookie of some kind. It looks yeah. edible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't remember what it is, but it it's, I don't know. So I don't know what she made it out of. I remember she had to do it the day of though to make it oh. work. So it was like Christmas day. She was making the plaque. So it was kind of fun. <laughs> That's awesome. Gosh, I hope to get one of those one day. Do you, were, are you excited about that? Was it cool when you got that 100K plaque or do you not care? <laughs> it was cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, you know, because I, I was like, this is the one I'll get. I'm never going to get the the gold one. So it's like, this is my one. <laughs> What's the gold one? The million? That's a million. Yeah, we're not getting that. <laughs> what do you mean? You're uh, what? 200k in like three years I mean, we're like... Uh, it, it goes fast man it, once you no, hit not that with Yu -Gi -Oh, you, you hit a ceiling break it break the you mold hit a ceiling. well you're Sam's about to get... at 750 and the man's been grinding for 10 years so yeah but you're friends with pokey rev <laughs> yeah so maybe yeah. if i branch into to pokemon i did a pokemon <laughs> video the other day didn't work so well uh oh, really? 15k not so good but Dang. i did open some uh some japanese uh like 1997 Pokemon, which is fun. Oh, but that's cool. Didn't that's do well, stuff. but it was enjoyable. So there's that's, that. that's all that matters, right? Yeah. Well, you also did videos with, with Nick. You went and visited Yep. Uh, out in Jersey. That one did um, good. The one where we went to the store, that was, yeah. that was fun. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot, like that's kind of where the trend I feel like is happening for Pokemon at least. Um, especially the big creators, they're like kind of phasing out of openings every day. Like Nick's yeah. doing reaction videos now. People are trying to vlog more. Um, is that something that you want to do? Because I think that's sort of the trend that uh, that we're seeing happen in Pokemon, at least. Because like, there's so many people coming in to open up Pokemon cards. It's becoming saturated, boring. Yeah, we want to see our favorite guys doing something different. Is that is that in the works for you? Or are you like trying to implement some sort of weekly vlog style thing or different type of content? Yeah, I'm always trying to like not just do an opening, but you know, the problem is once you choose something else, sometimes it'll just be like, I should have just done an opening when it does terrible, <laughs> yeah. you know, because people are like, where's the opening? But I like to do, uh, I like to switch it up. So I, I do vlogs when I go to the YCSs and stuff like that. I did one for okay. Card Party as well. Um, and so I'll like, I'll put together a vlog just to switch it up because it's always nice. Like opening is the bread and butter, but it's nice to like right. switch it up so that you appreciate the opening, you know, you're not seeing too many of them. So, uh, I do vlogs for that kind of stuff. I did a whole series that guess that price I did with like Charlie and a bunch of people. I'd have on other creators right. guess Yu-Gi-Oh prices and stuff like that. So I've done like 17 episodes of that. So hmm. that's a nice switch up. So those could occasionally do pretty well. Uh, the Charlie one got like 200,000 views, which is like the best video I've had all oh, year. Um, awesome. Yeah. So that was really cool. And it's a nice switch up. Uh, and I'll do other things like, you know, I do like, uh, I've done a couple. I did one with Poker Rev and one with Cyber Knight, where, which I haven't actually released that one yet, but probably by the time you see this, mm. uh, where we did a pack battle, like not together, but we had like this wheel thing and it changed up everything and so it made it fun. So I, I'm always trying to think of different things besides just sitting down and opening cards because obviously that gets old, but that is the, the main thing. But it's really hard when you do seven a week, seven days a week to like 
not do a lot of openings, you know. Gosh. So yeah, because you can get you do a video a day. Yeah, I have had a video every day since February 26, 2021. Wow. A video, a live, or uh, there was two days I only did a short. That was kind of cheating, but I did do that. That, that was 2021 that I did that. Okay. So basically wow. two and a half, oh, two and a quarter years, something like that, straight. Dang. That's all. Yeah. Trying to do anything other than opening cards to do a daily video sounds impossible. Yeah. So like if it's not a card opening, that's like a special video, you know, it's like, I'm working on that for multiple days and I'm working on yeah. the open. I do like a couple openings to get ahead and then do that. Gotcha. Did I make it into your, into your video? I need to watch it now. Your card party video. I, uh, I think you might have, I'm trying to remember. We had so much footage. I just sent it to the editor. And I'm like, Hey okay. man, just like do what you can. But if I'm pretty sure you were in there at least once. Cause hey, we I got hang a lot out. of you. We did hang out a little bit. Um, that yeah. first day, me, you and Jarvis, that was a good time. It was a nice banter going back and forth while we were sitting in the stands yeah. there. That that uh, was a, that was a really fun event. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. Have you have you so other than the YCS, have you gone to like Collecticon? Have you gone to I have. other you have? I've Which gone from, to one Collecticon, it was in Charlotte. And on the way I, I or on the way back I met up with Rusty, you know, because he lives around there. So that was cool. Uh I, and I'm going oh, to Charlotte see you next there. year. I did see you there. Wait, were very, you there? Very briefly. Yeah. It was like we crossed paths. I said, hi, that was it. I remember seeing you now. We did not talk other than the, hey, what's up? But I am going this year. Are you going oh, this year? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that now. Yeah, because okay. yeah, I saw you close to, together because I saw you there and I saw you at Leonhardt's thing. Yes, that's right. Um, uh, and yeah, uh, I am going this year. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to Rusty's? I am. I am. Yeah. Okay. I didn't see you. Yeah, there's a list. Yeah, he sent it to me. He's like, "Here's the list. Just tell me for coming." I was like, "Yeah, I'll be there." So okay, sweet. I'll see you there then. I'm I'm yeah. I'm booked for that. So we'll get to hang out at Rusty's. Uh, yeah, last I'm time really... it was just me showing up in the middle of like something that was like really important. I was like, "I'm here at the wrong time. This is really awesome." He's like, "No, don't leave." And I was like, "Dude, this is like." He was like trying to deal with some like uh, electric board that was like going out, and they like wouldn't fix it, and he was like really mad about it. But he's like, "No, you can't leave right now." But then he had like talked to those guys, so yeah, it was. <laughs> This will be better now that it's scheduled okay. with other people there besides yeah. just me. <laughs> yeah, there was other. Yeah, he did invite people out last year too, but it was like a spur of the moment thing. Yeah, Th this time it's planned out. So I I'm excited. Yeah. For, like that's why I'm going. I'm not going for Collecticon. I'm going to hang out. With yeah, Rusty. exactly. <laughs> I, I have a few friends that were like actually several friends Yu Gi Oh that wanted to do a booth. We did a booth last year, and I didn't really have my own section, but this year I'm going to yeah. do it. So oh. I have that. Plus, I have like going to meet up with all you guys on Sweet. whatever day that is. It's like the day before or whatever. Yeah, Thursday uh, or Friday. Friday. So it should be a pretty good time because it's actually like somewhat close to me, unlike a lot of the other places I go. Because Yu Gi Oh loves to have West Coast events, which is rough. Where, where are you again? Nashville. Yeah, basically. Yeah, basically. around there. Okay. Wait, how far of a drive is Nashville to Charlotte? seven hours something like that you're not driving are you are you fine i did last year uh i'll wow. probably drive again to have all my junk with me but uh, you know it's just, yeah, with a booth wow that's yeah. a long drive it's just seven hours no big deal that's nothing <laughs> after after four it's a problem <laughs> well i when i went to college it was like six hours so i'm used to it at this point oh where'd you go yeah. to college uh, i went in arkansas so it's about you got to go through Memphis and it's a couple hours away. I didn't go to Arkansas. I went to Harding, oh. which is around there. Okay. Huh. Yeah. I can't say I've ever been to Arkansas. I yeah. To... There's no reason to go really. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay. So you're, you're going to have a booth there. Um, who, who are you going to have the booth with? Just other. Uh, yeah. A bunch of other Yu-Gi-Oh guys. Like uh, you probably, you might not have heard of them. Maybe vintage Yu-Gi-Oh you could have heard of. Yeah. Uh, it's people like that. Uh, Petty party, you know, uh, yeah. crack and packs, people like that. So Petty just part, a bunch yeah. of Yu Gi Oh guys. Petty party. He he worked for he's worked for a few few yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. That's Peter, right? Yeah, Peter. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he's, okay. he'll be there. Yeah, I've not, I don't think I've ever met him in person. I know I've probably you, talked it, to him. Yeah, I don't know. He was at Collecticon last year, but you know, I didn't really see yeah. you, so maybe you didn't see him. But yeah. he was there as well. I don't know. Okay, cool. Um, so you're also married. I you am, have, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a wife. I do. And you do Yu-Gi-Oh content for a living. I do. Um, this is something I like to ask a lot when my friends have kids or are married in this uh, world that Fortunately, we live Fortunately, not the first part, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, what's that dynamic like? What does your wife think of Yu-Gi-Oh? Well, it's interesting because 
we got married in, well, actually we were started dating in 2016. So it was before I got back into anything. Oh, so it was like, I wasn't, so you didn't have anything. Like I wasn't into Yu-Gi-Oh cards or Pokemon cards or anything like that. Okay. So, so you we were, were just in, we were in college. Yeah, it was normal. All I did, all I cared about was playing basketball at that point. That was it. oh, you were basketball. That's right. We talked about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I, all I did was, I mean, not like real, not really. I didn't play for the school or anything. I just, you know, pick up yeah. and everything. That was yeah. I didn't like actually like care about school. I mean, I should have more than I did. I was yeah. just trying to make sure I didn't lose my scholarship or whatever. Okay. Um. So that's all I was doing at that point, and so I got into like the Yu Gi Oh thing or whatever, and like. I guess slowly she just like found out about it or whatever. But by the time we got married, like it, I was like all in in 2019 because we got it was like December 2019. And that was like when right. I was posting videos all the time. And so she kind of knew. But like when first got married, she was like, a, all right, are you going to be spending too much money on this or whatever? And I was like, ah, I don't know. And then one of the first things I did, like it was like a week or two into being married. I bought a first ed LOB Euro box. It wasn't an NA, so it wasn't great. <laughs> right, it was like 1500 right. bucks. And it was while she right. was asleep. She woke up. She's like, you bought that? And I was like, yeah. And then ever since then, she's just been like, whatever. Uh, I get it. And <laughs> so uh, then later, I was still an accountant. And then I quit my, I was like, hey, Chels, I, I want to like quit or whatever. And she was like, <gasps> she's like, how are you going to do that? And so then <laughs> are, she quit. Gonna, not, not how are we going to do that? How are you going to do that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then she quit her job. So we both quit at the same time. What is she doing? So she was doing like, uh, she was like a tech, for, uh, like a uh, ophthalmologist and stuff like that. Okay. Like yeah. checking eyes and everything. Uh, and it was not paying much. And she's yeah. she wanted to be a nurse, but mm -hmm. she dropped, she like, she stopped being in, like trying to be a nurse her last year because she got all like nervous about like, I can't do it. I'm not going to like yeah. get through. And then so she ended up doing something else and it like, wasn't what she ended up wanting to do. So she's like, I want to be a nurse. I want to go back. I was like, go for it. And yeah. then I was like, I want to quit too. And she was like, are we going to do this same time? I was like, yep. And that, so we did that. Wow. And somehow it worked. I don't know how, but that's amazing. Now she's a nurse after like a year and a half of, uh, accelerated programs yeah. and stuff like that. So now she's that, and you know, I'm doing YouTube and everything. So it worked out well, but it was definitely risky at the time. Yeah, that's great. No. Um, yeah, the whole nursing thing is that's tough. I mean, that, um, I dated a nurse once in my past and, yeah. uh, yeah, the hours and the stress and like always trying to keep, uh, uh, I don't know. It, there's always more schooling to do when you're a nurse, if you want to be whatever thousand type of nurse, <laughs> there's, yeah. always, there's so many things to do. So there's just a constant stress and constant studying. Yeah. For... There's classes to keep up with. There's like yeah. the next level you got to get to all that stuff. And it's like, yeah, she's like working night shift right now. So that's why I was like, I got all uh, night tonight to, to do the podcast. So. <laughs> that's awesome. So does she like Yu-Gi-Oh at all? Does she like cards? In no, she way? doesn't care. Uh, she doesn't care about Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, she, but she's like, look, you know, it's, it's working. So I guess that it's great or whatever. But I then I tried to get her to play Pokemon the other day for the first time, which was mm. hilarious. Uh, so yeah. Uh, she's never, she never did any of it somehow. She could, she's like the age that she should have like encountered it. She was like, Oh yeah, my brother had those, but I never really, really cared. And I was like, she somehow mm. missed it. Wow. Girls, man, missing out. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta hang out with your brothers more when you're growing up. Really sad. Really sad. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we also, um, yeah, so we, we got to spend some time together at card party. Um, you, uh, we're, we're Invisalign brothers now. Um, yeah, yeah. Which, which, uh, how's that going for you? You, you said you have thirty, how many weeks? Thirty-one weeks. Thirty-one like trays or whatever trays. they call it. So it's weeks, and then uh, they were like, "Yeah, it's probably not over after that either." So I heard you have like fifteen. So I you have, got it nice and easy. Yeah, I have fifteen trays, ten days per tray. Yeah. Um. Oh, ten days per. Minor ten days per. Okay. 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 Yeah, minor ten days per. So it's like five months, but. Yeah. But yeah, they like told me not to get it really. You don't need to do it, but I just wanted to do it um, to make my teeth straighter. Yeah. Did, did you have braces as a kid ever? I didn't. No. So I didn't have uh, braces okay. or anything. So my yeah. teeth were always really straight up until oh. like recently I've had like, uh, they started to move and I was like cutting my tongue because it was like what was turning. And it, so I was like, yeah, no, no, it wasn't that bad, I thought, but I guess it was worse than I thought. But did you get your wisdom uh, teeth taken out? No, I have them. And they said, they were like, yeah, it's fine if you leave them in, actually. So they're just still wow. in there. Yeah, I did some I'm like one in a hundred that, that can leave all four in. And that's like, that's yeah. I I did some pretty serious braces back in the day when I was young, yeah. like second grade, fourth grade. And then 
I did the wisdom teeth. So yeah, I had some pretty serious teeth stuff going on that made this easy, I guess now. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm what five, no, five days in six days in, they don't hurt anymore. The first couple of days are pretty rough. Oh, in terms I couldn't of, sleep. That was card party. It was the first like two days. Oh God. I got dude. them literally the day before. So I, I like my teeth were killing me that whole time. And I was like yeah. lisping and everything. I couldn't talk yeah. with them in. Thankfully I figured it out, but I, I literally <laughs> could not talk. It was rough. Yeah. I wasn't thinking I was going to do these with, with it in, but I was like, you know what? He's got, he's got Invisalign in. I'm going to keep mine in too. Do you take and, them out to like record? Uh, I, well, this is the first time recording since I oh, okay. gotten them, but I, I probably yeah. will. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I, Pretty soon you'll be able to talk completely normally, and it yeah. I mean, you'll get I used to it. It took me I, like a week or something. Really? I, I mean, there's definitely a little bit there, but I don't hear anything. Right off you. the bat, it wasn't. I I really they, couldn't though. It was they bad. fit really. Yeah, they fit really yeah. nicely for me. I don't know yeah. why. Maybe but, because uh, you yeah. have straight teeth already. <laughs> I guess so. I, I yeah, I, I'm doing a business line for no reason, just to <laughs> just to look cool or something. It's just know. a flex, you know. It's just a flex. <laughs> yeah, spend a bunch of money on plastic to. Yeah, I in do that mouth. any. I, yeah, I, I do it with cards. Might as well do it in my mouth. Yeah, <laughs> clip that. <laughs> uh, so what what else do you collect? Are you a collector of anything else, or are you just Yu Gi Oh? Um, so originally like back when I was in Pokemon, I had a bunch of Pokemon cards, which yeah. 2019 getting married and we needed to go where well, we didn't need to go, but we were going to Jamaica. So, uh, it was not yeah. required, but we wanted to go or whatever. So I sold all of my cards to TCA gaming. Oh. Um, and you know, 2019, t- about three months later, four oh. months later, everything oh. blew up. Uh, you know, it wasn't terrible stuff. Like I got shadowless, a full shadowless set. I bought, mm. I actually bought a full shadowless set for 400 bucks. Ooh. Uh, and so I had that whole thing. I mean, they were like light play to mod play. So they weren't like crazy or anything, but, uh, you know, I had a bunch of stuff like that. I sold them all to him for like, I think it was two grand. So, you know, mm-hmm. he's probably buying it 50, 60% or whatever. So it was worth three or four before it blew up. Mm. Uh, so who knows what it would have been if I had held on to it. But I used yeah. to collect those. I got a little bit back into those. I have a few more cards now. Uh, recently, I bought a few things. And then I also have been getting back into collecting all the physical games for Pokemon. Uh, so I'm trying to get all of those. I already had a bunch of them. Sealed, I, complete in box. No, no, no. So I used to have sealed. I used to have 2019, yet again. I had Ruby sealed. I had Silver sealed. I had Blue sealed. And I had Yellow sealed. <sighs> And I sold one of them to Ryan, I think, or two mm. of them to Ryan okay. uh, right before it blew up. But I did buy a LOB first at Vox with right. part of that or that money plus other stuff. Uh, so it, it was like I sold it to get something. And that was what that video actually blew up my channel or whatever. So it was oh. worth it. But well worth I it. like I was buying like Pokemon Silver. I think it was one hundred and fifty dollars uh, for a sealed now yeah. complete in boxes like five hundred for silver. Yeah. And so I had a sealed one Damn. and it was 150. And then I bought like blue version in great shape. Like it had one corner issue. Probably get like a, I don't know how to grade games. I've never done it, but it probably would have been done really well. I got bought it for 300 bucks. And I think Ryan bought it for like 800, like a, like a year later or something like that. Okay. And even then, and then it, you know, it went crazy a couple right. months after he bought it. So, and yellow, Man. same thing. I was like, it was like two something and they were all completely sealed. They looked awesome. Uh, I, I miss those I so much. Know, I don't know why I never bought those. And I there was a at, little bit where everybody was buying them. Yeah, I it was looked like a at thing. them, and I, I for years, like uh, Nick told me to buy them, like way before they. Yeah, were one a of thing. the two that he bought for me, he, he gave to Nick for like a present or something. So I think okay. it's yellow. I think I think that's yeah. the one I had. Okay. Yeah, and I just never did. I don't know why. Yeah, it's a missed all- opportunity. I would always find Yu-Gi-Oh sealed games like the game yeah they're everywhere that had the man. Promos. But the problem uh, is Yu-Gi-Oh games sucked. That's just, let's be <laughs> honest. Like people ask me all the time, let's play some Yu-Gi-Oh games. I'm like, what games? Well, they're, they're all terrible. Card, they're all the card game, aren't they? Like they're the card game, but they don't work like the real card game. They're just like because when they made those games back in the day, they hadn't actually figured out the card game yet. Uh, they made they like made just this random thing where it's like it's kind <laughs> of like the card game, but it's just awful. So it's like not even fun. And so you only like it if you're nostalgic for it and you enjoyed okay. it back in the day. And like you get to see some really like goofy monsters that they put on there, which is funny. But like compared to like playing a Pokemon game, which is like have aged perfectly. And like yeah. even though some of them like 
they're not great, but you can still play them to this day. It's not even close. So, well, even I, like the the Pokemon trading card game game, that was right. good. Like, yeah, because it's a real game. It was a real game. They did one for yeah. Dragon Ball Z too. I have that sealed, but it's beat the hell. I've yeah, never yeah. played it. I, I don't know if that's any good. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's that's really odd. They just made games to make them. And not yeah, I, there's a weird story behind it. A lot of that. Look, the thing with Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon, they seem similar. Yu-Gi-Oh has so many random things about everything that like compared to Pokemon, it's like there's like nothing like there's a couple very like, you know, fourth ed- fourth edition base sets like, oh, wow, really different, unique. There's a hundred of those for Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. Everything Yu-Gi-Oh! is the most confusing thing ever when it comes to games, when it comes to the original cards, when it comes to the Japanese. I'm just learning about the Japanese recently and they've done some crazy stuff like those. They've mixed up sets to like make the English sets. It's just it's very confusing. Yeah. Every time I look at Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't get it. Like, oh yeah, this is a rare because it's, the letters are this color and they're holographic, but it's rainbow. It's not just yeah. regular. It's yeah, it's, ra- it's silver. And then like, but then now they'll have like gold letter rares. So then yeah. there's like, but then there's like silver name and secret rare because it's got the parallel foil and like there's a bunch of different, there's so many different things. It's a, it's a, lo- a lot easier to follow Pokemon because back in the day you're opening up, you're like, all right. 12 hollows they're all the same <laughs> they're, they're just hollows super rares as i call them in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. we had three rarities right off the bat yeah it's very confusing and i don't know if i'll ever learn it but you probably not I, but you know i actually um i just had a big pickup today for dragon ball z boxes the the the, the score stuff from yeah from the early 2000s um found this guy with the shop who actually wants to sell out i think he has a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh. i haven't seen it yet i just met him today but I'm hoping to go, go meet with him and see what he has. Um, but he says he has like 12 storage units, two of them of which you can put a semi truck in. Wow! <laughs> so I'm really curious to see what this guy has. Um, Sounds like a lot. Could be, could be a gold mine, but, um, but who knows? I, another thing I was going to, since you posted that Naruto card the other day. Yeah. Uh, I love those cards. I've only opened like, a couple packs because like they're expensive man like yeah. like weirdly expensive so i opened like one i got a kakashi so i've just had it in my collection it's like really cool but it was yeah. like a 30 dollar pack i was like I- i'll buy one i'm not gonna buy a box but yeah those cards are crazy they were bandai and they did like 27 sets or something 26 sets yeah and they had to kill the game because of licensing issues yeah um so that ended in 2000 i don't know 2005 2006 maybe seven somewhere around there and squeaks game world you know squeaks i uh, yeah i've seen him around yeah, yeah. i don't know so him though. i used to do a podcast with him and really good friends with him but um he was like radar i'm buying naruto there's this awesome card game that died people are still playing it like they've yeah. rec- they've made new sets because they're crazy fans for it yeah we gotta buy it we were buying packs for like two bucks wow <laughs> and I mean, he bought way more than I did, but between me and him, we bought out as much as we could. And then the prices just started going up and up and so up. So it's your so, fault that I paid 30 bucks for it's a It's Squeak's fault. <laughs> but yeah, we have, we like, I think he's, he still has like one of each box. I think I have most of my boxes left. Um, and then just a bunch of loose packs. But there's this one set called Tales of the Gallant Sage, which is the 20th set. And they printed 20 alternate art cards where oh. there was only 20 of each what it's, it's the coolest thing ever i've opened oh. way too many packs to chase them haven't pulled them they're really really expensive uh the packs yeah 20 like, each that's insane yeah, yeah back in 2005 cool. they were short printing stuff that much it, yeah it was really cool so um i still have a bunch of tins left and some packs left but they sell for like 75 dollars a pack because people yeah. are just chasing these things yeah um, but i haven't i have yet to see anyone pull one so oh my gosh that's um, insane dude yeah, yeah that I, when I opened like some of those packs, people were like, I loved this game. This game was really good. And I was like, really? Like, so I didn't know it was a licensing thing. So that makes yeah. more sense. Cause I was like, I hear so many good things about the game. And then the cards look great too. Like yeah. they're, they're very collectible in terms of like the art and stuff like that. So yeah, they're, they're not awesome. just like a picture, you know, like some really boring old uh, cards used to be like a picture from the anime or whatever. They right. have like well, cool they, foil on them too. They, I think they, a lot of it is like from the anime. Yeah, but like they, um, but they have like cool foiling on it the, though. That makes yeah, it look cool. Right. It has cool foiling. And then for some of it, they like do the full art type style, but it's still a yeah. shot from the anime. That's yeah. the one thing like 
that's why I love the old Dragon Ball Z cards is because they are from the anime and I, I love the show so much. It just like yeah. takes me right back to that episode or whatever's going on. The foiling is cool on most of them. Some of the sets suck. Yeah. Um, but that's why I love the Dragon Ball Z set. That's why I love the Naruto set. I wish people would feel the same way about Dragon Ball Z. They just don't. They, they're obsessed with Dragon Ball Super and the crazy yeah. craziness that they are doing with their art there. Um, but What's the deal with uh, – you probably know this. What's the deal with – so there's the score stuff, which is expensive. Then there's the Panini stuff that's cheap. <laughs> yeah. What is up with that? I've opened so, a ton of that because it's like 20 bucks for a box. Is it is it back down to that? Well, that I opened it in 2019. So, okay, but yeah, I opened so, tons of it back then. Yeah, me too. In 2019, I was buying cases and cases and cases because you could get them for twenty five dollars a box. And yeah, I just they were insanely get, cheap. I just wanted to get my fix on opening stuff, so I was just yeah. buying so much of it because it was dirt cheap. So Panini brought back. So Score died because it was a bad game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was a bad game. It was poorly distributed. It was poorly manufactured. You you can. I have one gem at 10 <laughs> getting a nine out of a pack is like insane. Wow. <laughs> so the manufacturing, ter- like everything about the game is pretty awful. Yeah. Um, so that died after like, I don't know, 16 sets, 15 sets or something. Panini picked it back up back in like early 2010s, 2011, 2012. And from the looks of it, they just recreated the same game. They renamed the sets with different names. Yeah. They changed the 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 um, the the look of the cards a little bit. The foiling was different, but essentially it was the same game. Yeah. A lot of the cards were the same, or they like, looked the same, uh, as far as like uh, like uh, um, you know, like the shots from the anime and all that. So it was yeah. very similar. So they just copy and pasted a game that failed. Yeah, because and it, it failed was bad, again. and then it failed again. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And yeah, I mean, even at that time, the Dragon Ball Z score stuff was still cheap. It was, you could get an old box for 200 bucks or something. Yeah. A hundred bucks. Um, but yeah, Panini stuff like died, died where it was, you could get it for 10% of distributor costs or whatever. Cause people were just yeah. dumping it. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of fun. I wish I bought more of it, but I ripped so much. Yeah. I used to, that was like in the time where I would do Instagram lives because like, yeah. that was like my following. And I would stream like, okay, I have all these packs. Let's open some Dragon Ball Z Panini. <laughs> it was like, I got this for $15. Let's just see if we can, like, I don't know what is in here, but let's open it up. And then we get those like, uh, you know, weird rares you could get. There was like, there was, I remember there was like circles in the hollow pattern and stuff like that. The, the ultra rares, the, the six yeah. stars. And there was like um, different cell, like there was one set was like a bunch of different cells you could get. Yeah. That was the uh, good set, Perfection. That was when the set yeah, died, I when the game died. Yeah. yeah, Perfection. I like Those that. looked I, cool. Those yeah. those cards looked really good. I have a ton of them just in a box somewhere. I don't yeah, know where. Yeah, I never got rid of mine because I was like, yeah. these aren't worth anything. I'll just keep yeah. them. Yeah, so I have I have a ton of hollows. I I was putting sets, like I was having fun. I was putting binder sets together, trying to get all of the like the hollows. Like I opened up so much of it. <laughs> Uh, so it I got cost you like two hundred dollars for yeah, it cost me thousands of packs. <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. I need that to happen again. I need a I need a game to die so I can just have fun and do that again. It's always <laughs> fun to find like every once in a while I'll go through and just try to find that. Like that's why I have that Harry Potter box and yeah. uh, like I have like a Warhammer box, like just random stuff like that. That's like okay, I found this. It was ten dollars for the, like twenty yeah. packs. I'm buying all of them. Just gonna see what it's about. And like most of the time they suck or like they're yeah. super dumb. Like I bought some. Uh, X Men packs. Ooh, yeah, they're like okay. from the first movie, I think maybe, yeah. and they're they're atrociously bad. Like they're like this long too. Like here's a normal. <laughs> oh, card. I know those they're ones. Like, yeah, yeah, they're extremely yeah, yeah, yeah. long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, why? Is, like these are you can't put them in a binder. You can't sleep them. Like whose idea was this? Yeah, it's awful. And the, yeah, I was probably like Dexter's Laboratory, Powerpuff Girls, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The weird like that weird stuff. It was so much fun to open. SpongeBob, Ryan, Ryan, and Nick had a bunch of SpongeBob. They yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what else they, did they have? Like they pack uh, battled on on Instagram Live once. And oh, I remember just, that. Wasn't that around that time where they they were like opening a base set pack or something? And they were like, yeah. "No, we're doing SpongeBob next or something." Yeah, and then we discovered there was like some legendary rares in the SpongeBob set. It was <laughs> hilarious. Um, but they had everything. I mean, they bought out that store. They had everything. Yeah, they had like My Little Pony or something. I don't remember mm-hmm. what it was. There's Neopets, My Little Pony. Neopets. That's what. Yeah, that's what I was uh, thinking of. Monster Rancher. Uh, yeah. All types of stuff. Then Ryan opened all his Yu-Gi-Oh packs and Gosh. pulled all of his cards. Yeah, he, him. I mean, Nick held on to all of it. 
Ryan opened a lot of it, sold a lot of it. They had yeah. so much Yu-Gi-Oh from that deal. It was disgusting. Yeah, it was insane. It was insane. I bought a bunch of stuff from Ryan. And that's like nothing. Yeah. It's so I much bought more. some of their Dragon Ball Z. I was pretty broke at the time, so I didn't get all of it. But um, yeah, that was the broke, the the poor days of working a lowly nine to five and that barely made any money straight out of college. I was paycheck to paycheck. And yeah, yeah. Spending every extra dime I had on. I, yep, that was me cards. too. That was me too. Oh, what a great time though. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was phenomenal. I feel like if I actually did make money back then, I wouldn't have been buying this stuff. So I'm happy that I was struggling. And, right. And exactly. Made this, yeah. Made this a lot better. Um, for sure. Are you, um, are you into like any of the non pop, like the Kickstarter games? Did you ever get into those? Like the Metazoo, so like Metazoo, stuff? Flesh and yeah. Blood, stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I've opened Flesh and Blood. Somebody sent me like four boxes. I opened them on Twitch, and you know, it just feels like magic to me. So I don't know much about it. Okay, uh, like it was cool or whatever, but I didn't really understand what was going on. Uh, okay. Metazoo, I've never opened or any of that, but yeah. uh, never been a thing I've really like felt like following up with or whatever. So. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, is there it. any more? Are there like a few other ones? Well, I have Cryptic. Um, Cryptic, yeah, yeah, I've seen a few uh, of those. Yeah, that one's been going well for them, I hear. But I got a little bit of that. But I, yeah, I that stuff was a nice break for a while. I talked about that with. I feel Pope, like it's easier but... to get into those if you are like a player of card games, which I am not. Yeah, yeah neither am I. It's too. Much. It's so complicated. It like with Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> it's like I enjoy playing Yu Gi Oh. But if you want to like actually follow the meta, it's like a full time job, and yeah. then like you actually have to like make money to like buy the deck too. So like. Master Duel was great because you can hop on there, but it's the same thing. You got to keep up with the meta. So for a while I was streaming it a lot and it was like fun, but then I was like, you know, I like, I just can't do this all the time. Like, so I'll play that every once in a while, but like yeah. people like going to tournaments is super impressive. Cause like it takes a lot and you got to be good. Like it, yeah. it's a hard game. So you got to be really skilled. Yeah. I went to a pre-release for the first time this year for Pokemon and um, yeah, just got like smacked by little kids that were way better than I was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, those yeah the people that play, they put in so much time. It's crazy, and yeah. my brain just doesn't work anymore for that type of stuff. So right, like they memorize every card in the past like four you, years. Every yeah, you deck, have to how know they work well, together. With Yu Gi Oh, you have to know every card from all twenty years because we don't have any. It doesn't roll over or anything. You use every what? single card can be used. So. What? <laughs> <laughs> there will be cards from like the fourth set that'll be like oh yeah this card's broken by the way if you now thanks to this new card if you use this old magic card from pharaoh servant now you can dominate in the current meta and stuff so like there is a ban list though right there's a ban list so if it's too good okay. like there's stuff from back then that's still banned because it was like too good okay. but like stuff like monster reborn just recently came off the ban list a couple years ago and like right gecky like a year ago or something like that so all those cards that are like 20 years old, they weren't even be, you couldn't even play them because they were, because they, they were still so reprint them though. Oh, they're, re oh, they're reprinting everything right now. They just yeah. announced that they're reprinting one of the astral cards, which is like, you do you remember the 10 K dragon craze? Did you ever no. get, hear anything about that? No. During 2020, they printed this card that was the 10,000th Yu-Gi-Oh card. And it was okay. basically like a starlight rare. So it was like one in every two boxes or one in every two cases. So about 25 boxes uh, to get one. But then there wow. was also another one in the set. So it was like one in 50, really. And okay. so the 10K Dragon was this huge thing that everybody wanted. And it's never really been below a thousand bucks. It's always been really expensive. There was another card printed in that same set that was the other high rarity card. And yeah. they just reprinted it, like straight up reprinted it. Like they announced <laughs> it. And I was like, wait, what? They're reprinting that? So yeah. And like it's a big thing about like a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players will get mad when you, when you're like upset that they're reprinting something. Cause they're like, yeah. yeah, but it needs to be accessible. And it's like, the thing about these cards is like that card was, is already a, like a low rarity card that you could afford for 50 cents. Yeah. So it's like the high rarity card doesn't need a reprint. Like you already have access to the card. We don't need to crush the value of this card. Cause now that old set is, you know, it's, it's even harder to open. Like the 10 K dragon hasn't been reprinted, but who's to say they won't. Right. You know, and then there's no way you're going to open Battles of Legend Armageddon anymore because the all the good cards, like you could just go open the newer version and get the same thing for a lot cheaper. So I, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like that they've yeah. been doing that. Yu-Gi-Oh is weird, man, how they get away with that. And they're fine. Well, but, yeah, because because all the people that are like, yeah, awesome. 
Great. This is awesome that we're reprinting all these cards and nothing's rare. But like, it's completely different with Magic Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. Completely. Yeah. The way that the people react and the way that the companies do things. It's so yeah. weird. They all do it fairly differently. Yeah. Their player bases, their collector bases are all... I, again, I think there's enough differences there. It's weird that they can all work. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Uh, Konami is an interesting company for sure. They, uh, they're very, you know, they're from Japan, so there's a lot of, you know, Pokemon is as well. But there's a lot of things that this don't make sense that they do yeah. a lot of the time. So I think that's what I'm going to have to keep an eye out for. Everyone's going to Pokemon Worlds in Japan for Pokemon. I'm going to go find some Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look for some. Yu- that's what I did at Card Party. I found some. Yeah, yeah. There was a few Yu-Gi-Oh cards there. Make some good deals. Yeah, found some cool stuff, and then ran into some people that I've known for years and didn't know it. I'd, oh. I'd never, I'd never seen them before, but we had interacted like a that's bunch cool. on like Instagram and stuff. They're like, "Hey, I'm this guy," and I was like, "Really?" I was like, "That's cool." They're that's like, awesome. one, of, "One of the vendors I've known for like four years, and I didn't know." Wow, you just so like buying from cool. him over the years, and yeah, I mean, he sold me a bunch of stuff uh, back 2019 was like a first time, and then like I walk up and he's like, "Oh, hey, Ruxin," he's like, "I am this guy," and I was like, "Oh, cool." <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. That's one thing that I love about those events. You get to meet people that you've been talking to for years and have right. no idea what they look like. So exactly. So now I've seen them before, which is pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, what what else is to to end off the the conversation here? Is there is there anything exciting happening in the world of Ruxin? Is there um, do you have any new styles of content you're coming out with? Any cool collabs? Do you have any crazy ideas that you want to do? Like what's Tell tell the world of my, the Poker well, Radar fans. You know, after an hour or whatever we've done, I mean, I've said everything that I'm doing yeah. at this point. But, okay. uh, you know, just continuing to try to find new content, interesting content. You know, uh, of course, Pokemon, baby, my Pokemon channel. It's going to be epic one day. Pokey Rux. It's going to be great. I'm addicted to Pokemon, which is a problem. So That's good. Since it's, you know, not making me any money but that's okay it's, it's fun it's you're addicted fun. to the it's giving you fun it's paying you and it's fun. my hobby it's my new hobby it's my new hobby <laughs> <laughs> that's good i should start a dragon ball z channel i think that would bring me some might joy. as well i mean you're gonna lose money like me on it but you know yeah. might as well go for it yeah that could probably not work but because like yeah that because it's I'll so talk- weird to like you want to do that content but you can't do it on your like regular channel you know right because it'll right. just it just doesn't work so yeah. that's why i have like that's why I have three channels because I had one that I was going to that I did post some Pokemon openings on and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I can't keep up with three channels. This is too much work, man. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm I, back to two. I, I, I'm posting my my shorts and or clips of this of the podcast and people don't even want that. They just want the full length podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I, yeah. It's so weird how um, how that works. But I don't know. I'm telling myself it's helping. So I'm going to keep it's got to it. be. It's got to be right. Like for. Shorter, more consumable stuff, right? It gets way less views than my full, the full podcast. So, it's I really guess odd. the hope is that like those like are more likely to go to new viewers, right? Because like a so. podcast, it's hard to get to a new viewer like that. Like, oh yeah, a two hour video. Let me watch that. But I guess yeah. those five minute ones. Yeah, because that's. I hope so. Yeah, maybe that maybe that'll break through, and then like they'll like then go to the full podcast. But I get, I get some some watch later clicks. It's. <laughs> Oh yeah, I put your stuff in watch later all the time. By the way, oh, so <laughs> appreciate that, that. So that I can go back and like, okay, I'm I'm like driving now. Now I can listen to this podcast. It's perfect. Now I have three hours, two hours to listen to a podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, awesome, man. I appreciate you hopping on and and chatting. Um, it's great to get to know you a little bit better. I'm, uh, I'll be seeing you in Charlotte in a month, two months from now, I guess. Yeah, two yep. months from from now, a month from when this probably comes out. But yeah. Um, but yeah, awesome, dude. Thank you, Philip. Appreciate uh, appreciate the time and love the content. You will hit a million. I believe in you. Heart, <laughs> yep, heart of the cards. Um, right? Is that the saying? Heart of the yep, cards. No. Yeah, good. You're doing good. Just I know. Keep, so, you pretend like you just cut this out. That just never just happened. <laughs> cut out every time I say I don't know about anything about Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. cut those out. You've got about ten <laughs> times you got to cut out right now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's awesome. I'll uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to hanging out with you at uh, at Resties and. I'm sure he'll have some crazy Yu-Gi-Oh. I would assume. I already, I already commented on his video opening LOB the other day. I can't wait to open a first at LOB box with you when I get there. So uh, we'll see he'll, if he follows through. It. If he does it, hey, he'll do it. That's the problem. He'll do it. <laughs> he's he is crazy. Yeah, he, he's, he's got a lot of stuff. He's the most generous human being I know. 
these, yeah last uh, time i came up and he started trying to give he was giving me pokemon cards and i was like dude you don't have to give me anything he's like no take these you gotta you gotta i was like all right sure whatever <laughs> it's i can't wait i'm so excited i need to bring him a gift i don't know what to get him yeah good point thanks for reminding me i need to yeah. i need to pay him back for the last time yeah i think we should yeah I, I need to figure out i don't know what do you give someone that has everything yeah exactly <laughs> like i i guess i can give he probably doesn't have every Yu-Gi-Oh card so i probably it's probably easier for me actually That's maybe true. you could give him dragon ball z then i'll give him some dragon ball z i think yeah. he'd like that he also likes basketball too so we'll be able to connect on that yes he does like basketball i played on yeah. his court that was fun oh. Yeah. Yeah, right. we're gonna we're gonna have to have some 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 games out there. We'll have enough people for like a five on five. Yeah, it's gonna be great. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, I'll let you go. Appreciate the time, man. And uh um yeah, everyone go follow Rex and 34 everywhere. So thank you. Have a good one, man. Yeah, you too. Thanks for having me on.